co-founder of Sabri Subi joins me now in the studio. I really look at business as an incredible vehicle to really like make good and make change in the world. The other thing that, that you should also do is just take full responsibility when you're on those calls. And like, so don't leave it to somebody to say, will you get back to me after you speak to your partner? No, that's your responsibility. So there's nothing that happens on the phone call that isn't your responsibility. If someone ghosts you, that's also your responsibility. If someone buys or they didn't buy, that's also your responsibility. Um, and then the other thing is just like being very conscious you know, of the difference of selling and closing. Like a lot of people, they just look at the overall role as just one thing. Like I'm, yeah, I, I, I'm, I've sold this many. I, I'm just selling. They look at the, the whole sales process as just being selling. There is a huge difference between selling and closing, right? And a lot of people can sell. If you read the script right now, you're officially selling. Right after you, you, you get through all the, the diagnosis, then you go into sales mode, right? Closing is having the ability to move somebody to a decision without it getting uncomfortable, without it being confrontational and you still being able to get it done. I shouldn't say without, being, without making it uncomfortable because that, that not, that's not correct. Um, you know, the way that you do that is by asking probing questions and actually taking the call to it where it is uncomfortable. That's what most people can't do. And that's where the closing is done. It's very easy to sell someone, get them out of prop, but to close them, we don't, we don't mind if it's a yay or an A. We obviously want a yay more than we do an A. But the big thing that I will, I will say is, is never, ever, ever leave the call in a maybe zone. So you just follow up aggressively, very hard, a lot of frequency until you get what that answer is, either yes or no. We're fine with whatever it is. Um, and the only way, and so when, you're, when you've got the prop out, when you've set the second call, just understanding that this is the real game. Now you're in closing mode. And that doesn't mean that you come in and you close people into stuff that's not a great fit or you close them really hard and you make the thing really uncomfortable. The, the skill lies in being able to keep it light and stay in the uncomfortable zone. Not allowing it to get too, too heavy, but still being able to really push that thing to that last yard where you can actually move them to a decision without them feeling like you're being really pushy or you're being like a full on intense salesperson. And that's the thing that you really, re that's, what, like, that's the whole 80, 20 rule. That 20% of activities and actually being able to get someone to that part of the phone call and deal with that, that's where you make 80% of your commissions. It's not in the, the qualifying, the question asking and all that stuff. That's a prerequisite to get the call to those things, but make no mistake about it. That's the activity that makes the money. So when, when you're getting props out and you're getting in those calls, that's why the follow-up, it allows you to get into that practice arena more often than not to jump on the, on the judo mat and roll with that person and test your skills and find out what's working and what's not working. Yeah. But don't be uncomfortable to get them there. If you know, that's what's in their best interest for that person. Right. Because remember, if they believed everything that you told them, they would buy. That's the biggest thing to always remember. You're not in a position where if they did believe you, there is still a chance that they wouldn't buy. And then I can hear some of you saying, well, what if they don't have the money, Sabri? Then they, then they wouldn't buy. If they believed 100% that this would work, they would find the money. They'd chuck it on the credit card, man. they chuck it on the credit card, get in the program, and they've got six weeks to get some clients. If they fully 100% believed, right? So you just need to understand and be fully conscious and have that in your mind and let it be present that there is a huge amount of what you're saying that these people don't believe. And that's the silent objection. And you need to find ways to court that and to bring that out. All right. So if you did have 12 appointments on the calendar, do you think you could get five clients? No, I don't. Okay. Awesome. That's an opportunity to find out what it is that they're not believing or what they're because don't forget that people are always going to avoid being confrontational. They're going to fight like hell to stay within their comfort zone, 
get the information that they need to get and then bounce off the call pronto. Even if they have a genuine need and a genuine interest, that's just the way that people are. So when I say that you want to keep it light, be able to dive probe, get it to that uncomfortable spot, that's where all it, 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 it all happens, right? In, in really asking them those questions, not telling them what the program has in it, but asking them questions, right? Um, and that all really starts like by a- answering three questions. Um, and it's like, first of all, you need to get sold on why our company, why us? Like, why should somebody pick us over everybody else that's out there? Right? That you, you need to have those answers. Then you need to think like, why this product? Like, why QG? Why is this the best fit? And then also why you like, do you know, why Anna, why cost and why you, why should they make a decision to invest with you rather than any other of, of the other reps at King Kong? Not just outside that you're that you're selling against, but people even within our organization, and that just because that raises your whole belief about everything. Then you've got the company fully dialed in why they should pick us. You've got us like the product. Why should they take the product? And then why should they do it with you as well? And if you can get congruent on all of those things, you know you just start to gain unstoppable momentum on the call, and people can just hear that conviction in your voice on everything that you say, because you've got so much belief around what it is that you do. Yeah. And that then falls down to, because what you believe like in your mind about those different things, that is going to form what your thoughts are. Right. Um, And then your thoughts of what you're thinking about shapes, like the words that you use in your pitch, that aren't in the script, that's going to form that stuff. Um, And the words that you use are going to form the actions that you take when you're on the telephone, when you're out there in the marketplace. And then those actions that you take, they're going to form what your actual reality is, right? And how many deals you're doing and how many people you're bringing in the, in in the program and what's going on and that is, is this a really like powerful feedback loop that constantly, you just need to be conscious of feeding that thing all the time. So the first thing to do is to get fully, fully sold. You can't be partially sold. Why us? Why the product? Why you? You're going to have the most fun with them. You're going to shoot them straight, right? You're not going to be completely just blinded by what your self-interests are in the deal. And regardless of whether or not they buy from you, you're going to make sure that they, they remember you by having some fun, pushing them to where they're not comfortable and doing all of those things that you need to do. And the only way that you're going to do that and change like the level of activity that you bring is by changing what you believe is possible. Right. Cause the whole thing is like, I, I, I don't think that any of you guys probably want to live an average life, right? That's the, probably the very last thing that you want to do and know that like average people take average actions and they just slip into a, like a rut of what it is that they want to do. But if you want to make like crazy comms, you know, if you, if you want to make more money than, you know, anyone that you know in the, in the position that you're doing, all of that kind of stuff, then you need to be a madman. That's, that's just, it, it just comes down to you can't do average things and expect average outcomes. If you want a breakthrough result, you have to put a breakthrough input into that. You have to put a breakthrough effort in in order to get a breakthrough result. And there is no shortcut about that. I'm telling you right now, doesn't matter how good that you get at closing, probing questions. It all comes down to the inputs, right? If you have the best sales funnel in the world, but you have five contacts in that thing, doesn't matter. It's never, ever going to do it. So you, you have to be absolutely crazy with the amount of like action that you're taking to get the results that you want to get. Hey guys, we're coming to you from lockdown in Melbourne. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, share it with a friend. We're dropping a video like this every day on YouTube and I will see you in the next video.